our dear viewers, and welcome back to our show, Diet Myths. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite foods, and that's coconut oil. Now I'm sure many of you have heard or you know have tried the paleo diet and have seen how much it recommends coconut oil. Coconut oil has been one of the most sought after oils out there, even more than olive oil, which is a bit scary because coconut oil is not that great, especially when you take it in excess. Now I know a lot of people have started baking in coconut oil, cooking in coconut oil, even frying in coconut oil. And frying actually does work because this coconut oil does have a very high um, burning point. So it takes a long time before this oil burns, unlike olive oil, which burns really fast. So you can't really fry in it or it won't withstand this high heat. But this coconut oil craze all started since um, the paleo diet came out because the paleo diet really recommends using co coconut oil over all the other oils out there. And that's not quite the case, or that's not what we recommend here at Desman Diabetes Institute. We really like to take a look at all these oils and see which one um, really does work best for all our patients. And, and although the coconut oil does come from a plant source, or comes from um, the coconut tree, it doesn't really mean that it's the best thing out there. So that is one of the biggest diet myths that are out there. And although I personally have fallen for this diet myth, I do not recommend that you get on this um, coconut oil craze. Of course, everything in moderation is advised. So you could have this coconut oil, but in moderation. So what we're going to do today is take a closer look at the coconut oil and what it really constitutes of and compare it to other oils like the canola oil, the olive oil and other nuts out there and see whether it's really worth it to invest um, in this coconut oil and start taking it in and swapping our diet. Because unlike other places in the world or other regions, we don't rely heavily on the coconut oil. Like regions, for example, in South India, where the reliance on coconut oil is so much more heavier because of its abundance. So here it's more costly for us to invest in coconut oil or, or to actually find it in the grocery store. It's not usually found everywhere. And like I said, despite the fact that it has a very high burning point and it's great for frying, it doesn't really mean that that, you know this should be the go-to oil that we all go to I always tell all my patients go back to yourself your ancestry and what your grandparents used to use and consume that so I want you to stay tuned so we can take a closer look at this miracle coconut oil and see whether it's worth it or not dear viewers so let's take a closer look at this miracle coconut oil that everyone's been raving about 
And you can see it almost in all our grocery stores right now. And all these people at the gyms and these health freaks are consuming high amounts of coconut oil. So should you really invest in coconut oil? Now let's take a closer look at what it's made of. So we know that we have different types of fat. Some fat's actually good for you and will help you lose weight and lower your cholesterol, while other fats do the complete opposite. And those are usually called the saturated fats. And the good fats are also known as the unsaturated fats, so the ones that are not saturated. Coconut oil like falls under the category of a saturated fat. So coconut oil is lumped in together with the group of butter, um, dairy fat, um, so all the high fat cheeses, and of course fat that comes from animal products. Now what differentiates the animal product fats from coconut oil is that they are rich in cholesterol. Now there is one key thing I want you to at least get out of today's episode, and that is that cholesterol does not come from any plant-based product. Cholesterol will only come from an animal-based product. So whenever you see um, a plant-based oil like olive oil or coconut oil or um, canola oil labeled as cholesterol-free, you need to know that that's just a marketing ploy. Of course it's cholesterol-free, it never had cholesterol to begin with. So like we said, this coconut oil is a saturated fat. And like I said previously, we have two types of fat. So the good fat, also known as the HDL when you take your blood tests, and the bad fat, known as the LDL. So you'll see that um, it's always a ratio. So when your LDL is high, most probably your HDL is low. And while when your HDL is high, most probably your LDL is low or within the normal range. And so what coconut oil does is that it raises your LDL but does not have an effect on your HDL. So it doesn't affect the good cholesterol in your blood, but it will raise the bad one because it is a saturated fat. Now, animal-based fats like lard and G and all these things that people use, they lower the HDL and they raise the LDL. So you see the difference um, between the plant-based coconut oil and the animal-based butters and high-fat food products. So they're both raising the LDL. They both um, affect the HDL, either not affecting it at all or lowering it, which is not quite what we want for your heart health. So we're gonna take a deeper look now at whether or not you should consume it, how many calories this coconut oil gives us, and what you can do if you are considering consuming it. Stay tuned. back to our show our dear viewers so like we said our good cholesterol is not affected with coconut oil and our bad cholesterol is lowered so right now I want you to think is this something you're looking for and is this food worth it because part of having you know good heart health and you know making sure you're not prone to the heart attacks or the high cholesterol in your blood is to make sure your HDL your good cholesterol is always high and the bad one's always low. So if coconut oil is not gonna affect the good one, then maybe it's not the best thing to consume. Now, like all other um, types of oils, whether it's the good oils like olive oil and canola and other vegetable oils, and you know, we have our butters and our fats and our coconut oil, they all contain the same amount of calories. So you're looking at around 114 to 117 calorie per tablespoon. So that's the big tablespoon we have. And that will give us around 14 grams of fat. Now what coconut oil gives us is around 12 grams of saturated fat, and that is just too much to be consuming out of one tablespoon. And we always say limit the amount of calories or calories coming from saturated fat to around 7 to 10 percent of your total calorie that just might be really confusing for some people because how we do, how do we know how much percent is coming from the saturated fat 
And to that, my only answer is just cut it out. Don't have it. Um, personally, if I was to choose between coconut oil and butter, I would go for butter, which is something more tasty for me. And they do have the same amount of fat. And these are foods that we want you to take sparingly, so occasionally, every now and then. Then don't make it a part of your day-to-day -day life. Focus more on the healthier fats. So the fats that come from fish, like your omega-3s, your omega-6s, fats that come from your nuts, these will all help you fight the fat in your body because they increase your good cholesterol. As for the coconut oil, maybe it's best to just keep it on the shelves in the grocery store for now until more research comes out indicating whether it's really beneficial or not because we're just really not sure. So we can't put this claim that this oil will help us lose weight. It could be the complete opposite. And I always tell my patients, what use is losing weight when you're unhealthy or when you have you know, high blood pressure or high cholesterol or you're prone to heart disease? Weight isn't the only thing. You need to focus on your overall health and how you feel and your well-being. So if this is something that's gonna affect your well-being but help you lose weight, then it's not really that worth it. Instead, like I said, focus on the healthier fats out there and always take them without, within like a certain limit. They all contain around um, 45 calories per teaspoon or around 117, let's say 120 calories per tablespoon. So that's quite a bit. And you'll see that vegetables is always a lower calorie option um, and limit the amount of oils you put on them. I really got hope you guys enjoyed today's episode and you were enlightened by this coconut oil craze that's been going on. And we hope to see you guys next time.